session of hearing the word of God, sharing the word of God. Welcome all of you that are on board. My brother Joseph, thank you my sister, thank you my wife, may the Lord bless you. Thank you happiness, Bule, God bless you. Thank you for Caroline Mukuna, God bless you. All of you that are on board, God bless you so much. I would like us to take this opportunity to share the word of God. Thank you my son Adam together with your family. May the Lord bless you. Welcome somebody, create a watch party, share the video, more so keep sharing. Share more so in the mighty name of Jesus. Do the sharing in the name of Jesus. Today we have got a very powerful word of God to hear from the Spirit of God, what the Lord wants us to hear, what the Lord wants to tell us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe it's going to be a moment of blessing a moment of refiring, a moment of restoration, a moment of encouragement in the mighty name of Jesus. I know the grace is sufficient. The grace is there for us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are encouraged until we don't even feel as if there is any more corona. There is not, there's nothing like coronavirus. There is nothing like COVID. For those who know they are gone, they are pressing on strongly. They are moving on forward. And there's no time to be shaken. There's no time to be wavered in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's why the Lord has given me this powerful message to bring it unto you in the name of Jesus. And the message and the title of my message is Dealing with the Spirit of Distraction. Dealing with the Spirit of Distraction. Distraction. Not destruction, but distraction. That is the title of my message tonight. Welcome on board, my daughter Saitea. God bless you. Jane Osoro, wherever you are watching. Dealing with the spirit of distraction, not destruction. There is destruction and there is distraction. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, my brother Mugo, for that encouraging message. The fellowship is powerful. I like it. We are here for the fellowship. We are here to share the word of God. You know, when the devil thinks that he's distracting us, when the devil thinks that he's going to silence us, he can never silence us. No, we are unstoppable. We are unbogable. We cannot stop. We are doing what we do best. We are doing what we are called to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what I'm called to do. And I'm happy when I'm doing it. You are called to listen. And you are called to press on. Because you have a destiny. A powerful one. A great one. Dealing with the destiny distraction. Dealing with the destiny distraction. That is the title of my message. Dealing with destiny distraction. Let me tell you. One greatest thing that the devil can do. And be accomplished. Is distracting you. From your divine destiny. One thing the devil can do. And feel satisfied. Is causing you to be distracted. From what you are called to do. And I would like to begin by saying this. Anybody that you are that is a calling. Being alive is a calling by itself. Because for God to allow you to come, it is because of a destiny. It is because of a purpose that we are supposed to fulfill in this world. The problem comes in when people come into this world and when they grow up, the enemy take advantage of their ignorance. They don't concentrate on what their master want them to fulfill. And I want also to declare this, that the Bible is the manual of every human kind. No matter Arabs, no matter the Hindus, no matter the Islams, no matter who, the Bible is the manual. The Bible is a given manual for every human kind. What happens is the ignorant of humankind, they make wrong choices because of the spirit of distraction. The Bible is God's manual to help everybody attain the destiny that is God to fulfill. The Bible is God's manual to help everybody fulfill their purpose here in this world. Hallelujah. I want to begin by prophesying to anyone that you are watching me. There is no power of destruction that will succeed in distracting you. Calling. Let me define the word distraction. Distraction is taking away attention from what you are supposed to accomplish. Distraction is taking away attention. Taking away your attention from what you are supposed to fulfill. That is, distraction. that is to say, taking away your focus, taking away your attention, what you are supposed to fulfill, what God expects you to become. Distraction, the spirit of distraction comes to take you away from your attention. What you are meant to fulfill in this world. What you are meant to achieve in your life. The spirit of distraction has costed many people their destinies. Many people are supposed to be great, but they are ending up as paupers. They are ending up as poor people. They are ending up as beggars. Because the spirit of distraction found an opportunity. To divert their attention. The spirit of distraction comes to a divert destinies. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, my son, Nagri and I. Dealing with destiny distraction. Many people, let me tell you, sometimes when the devil sees you are. He brings some fake things before you receive the real things. What you are called for, 
is not what you go for because the devil saw it. Can I tell you, when Jesus was born, the devil knew who Jesus was and he tried to kill Jesus by cause the or killing of all male children who were under the age of two. When Moses was born, that's when the children under the age of two, the male children, were announced to be destroyed because these people carried great destiny. Can I tell you, wherever you are watching me from, the destiny is what attracts a lot of destruction in you. But unfortunately, many of us don't understand what we carry. And that's why I preached to you a message some time back that I entitled, Seeing What God Sees in You. Many people, if you will identify who you are today, there are some things you will change from this day. If you will realize what you carry in you, there are some relationships you will break today. Because they will cost you your destiny. Can I tell you, many people, when God look at them, he's disappointed at the cost of their lives that they are living today. Because God expects you to be a great person in this world today so that you can open up many doors for many people to benefit. Can I tell you, Many poor people today are suffering because of some of you that have failed to know their position. You are supposed to be a people, but you are begging for employment because the enemy distracted your attention. The enemy distracted your attention, your focus. Hallelujah. Hear me and hear me well. The level you are in today, that is not where God wants you to reach. God does not have a level limit of raising his people. God does not have a limitation in raising his people. You can become a millionaire, a billionaire, a trillionaire, as far as you can see it and refuse to be distracted from that destiny that God has called you for. You, re you reach a level of comfort zone because of few, ble of few blessings that you can count just because you have one business, just because you have one shop, just because you have one supermarket, you are comfortable now. You sit down with everybody, you talk to everybody, everybody is your friend. Can I tell you? dealing with the spirit of distraction? Destiny destruction. Weapons of the enemy that will come to distract you. Can I tell you, the devil is an author of destruction. The devil, the Bible says in the book of John, chapter number 10, verse 10, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There is nothing great that the devil wants out of you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to steal your mind. They want to kill your destiny. And that's why God raised people such as me and many other men of God. Because can I tell you, the Bible is only manual that does not miss anything. Anything you need, it is in the Bible. When I'm talking about destiny destruction, I'm not only talking about the born again. Even those who are not born again, their manual is the Bible. It's only that they are arrogant. It's only that they, they don't want to the compromise. The devil will never allow them. Hallelujah. Tonight somebody destiny is going to be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight somebody destiny.
whatever position you are diverted. Some of you, you are taking the wrong direction. But as I bring the word of God, I am decreeing restoration to the path of your destiny. In the name of Jesus, some who are distracted, some who are ladies, they went even to university level and they never came to distract them. Some stupid fellow that you are possessed by spirit of destruction came and deceived those impregnated them. They dropped their vision. Today they are housewives. Because they never completed their career. What they were pursuing is not what they are living for. They are now meant to be housewives. Some of you young men, you were studying hard and you went even to higher level of education. The spirit of destruction came and attacked you. Some fellows that were possessed came and introduced you to abuse of drugs. You are distracted. Some fellows who knew where you are going, they kept you busy by stories. You never had enough time to study. You wanted to become an engineer. You ended up becoming a teacher. I'm not saying a teacher is a bad one. Bad career. But that was not your initial, your initial vision. Many people today have settled for less. They have said to us, can somebody declare in the name of Jesus, say, my father, my father, I declare and I decree, I shall not rest. I'm not set up for less. Many people are called to be destiny raisers, destiny helpers of their families. Today, your family is suffering because distraction caught up with you. And you are not aware. It has blinded you. Anybody who comes to advise you, you know too much. Anybody who wants to tell you anything, you know too much. You say, Pastor, you are a pastor. I am a businessman. You cannot tell me something about business. Can I tell you? The Bible is the order of business. The Bible says, do business until I come. The Bible says, Deuteronomy 8.18, it is God who gives us power to make wealth. If you want to become wealth, if you don't want to become great, Deuteronomy 28, verse 2, the Bible says, the Lord shall raise your name above names of many of his nations. So the Bible has got the very best for your destiny. Isaiah 49, verse 16, the Lord has engraved your life in the palm of his hand. That destiny you desire, it can be taken within a trickling of an eye by the spirit of destruction. I want us to read the Bible in the book of 1 Kings, in chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. Welcome. Continue sharing the video. Please don't watch alone. Press that button there below that is written share and let other people watch the video together with you. 1 Kings chapter number 13. Listen very carefully to this story of a prophet who was distracted from his calling, a prophet who died prematurely because of distraction. Some people die premature death because they are distracted. They die premature death not because God wanted them to die. And the spirit of destruction. Some many men of God, they are called to go and seek for power. They don't know that God and Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter number 62, verse 11, that the Lord has spoken to me once, twice have I heard him, that all power belongs to God. Some many men of God, because of greed of power, they were distracted. They are calling. Now they are no more. Others are dead. Because of destruction, the devil see the Yazid, 
how they want to serve God in demonstration of power, in demonstration of miracle, and they are distracted. The devil takes advantage. Can I tell you that the vision you carry is what attracts distraction? The greater the vision, the greater distraction will have come to you. The greater the destiny you are called for. Many people look somebody like Samson before I leave. Samson was a man who was called for a great destiny, but the destruction entered. Delilah, a beautiful satanic demon, came attacking the vision, attacking the destiny. Nobody could convince Samson to stop going to Sorek, to stop going to the Philistine woman. And there he found his death. He was plucked off his eyes. Many people's eyes today are plucked off by the spirit. They can no longer see. They were rising very well. They never succeeded in pulling them down. Hear me, child of God. Wherever you are watching me, the Lord has sent me to declare and decree the spirit of destruction will not work, will not succeed in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear me, child of God. Destruction has costed many people's destiny. From presidency, to men of God, to any human. The edicts, the medics, all of them. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm talking about dealing with Hallelujah, hallelujah. Reko shala bagande legeze katalada. Ro shala bagande, thank you, Jesus. Sorry for the interruption of the network. I'm talking. Hallelujah. I want to read about the story of a prophet, a man of God that was distracted from the purpose of God in his life. Listen very well. The Bible says in the book of First, First Kings, chapter number 13, in verses 1, the Bible says this, And behold, there came to Bethel, a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord. Now Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. The Bible says, Then he cried out, Again, is the altar in the word of the Lord. The altar that says the Lord, Behold, a child will be born to the house of David, Josiah by name. And on that he will offer priests of high price, of high places, who burn incense on you. And men bonds will be burnt on you. Now it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who had cried out, cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand, from the outer side, lay hold on him, and his hand that stretched out against him dried up, so that he could not draw it in against himself. A man of God came to Bethel. He was sent by God. He prophesied against the altar of the Most High God in that land. And the Bible says, King Jeroboam was there. King Jeroboam went to offer sacrifice Jesus. And mind you, the work of burning Jesus was for the priests, was for the works of God, the, for the men of God. So the king Jeroboam wanted to do the work of the priest. Therefore the man of God came and cried against the altar. And what he prophesied, it was fulfilled. And when the man of God prophesied doomed, this king was angry by the prophet and he stretched his hand against the man of God. And his hand dried up straight as he has pointed the man of God and the hand could never come back again and the king begged the man of God to pray for him and the man of God did pray for him let me continue the Bible says and the altar was torn apart and the, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign that the man of God had prophesied verse 6 
Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the Lord your God and pray for me so that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him again, and because it was it was before as it was before. Verse 7. Now the king said to the man of God, Come home with me, refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. The king, man of God, come into my house and drink. But the man of God was warned by God. As you are going for this errand, as you are going for this mission, don't enter anybody's house. Don't eat anything in that land. Don't drink water. Don't receive anything. And here comes the king who is telling the man of God, let us go into my house. Eat and drink. Refresh. Verse 8. But the man of God said to the king, if you will give me half of your house, I will not go in with you, nor I will eat drink, bread or drink water in, you are, in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he had come to Bethel. Verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet. There dwelt an old prophet. Listen. In Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the words that the man of God had done but that day in Bethel. The words that he had spoken to the king. This they told also their father. Then their father said to them, What way did he go? For his son had seen the way the man of God went with, who came from Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle for me the donkey. So they saddled for him the donkey. And he rode on it. Then he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Listen very well to this message. Then he said to him, Come home with me, eat and drink. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go with you, neither will I drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, You will eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that you came. He said to him, I am a prophet also, as you are, and a, an angel of the Lord, and, 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 and the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with me to your house, so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him, but he lied to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Was, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who brought him back and he cried unto the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, for as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, commanded you, but came back and have eaten bread and in the place which the Lord said to you, no water. Your body will not come to the grave of your fathers. Now it came to pass, after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled the donkey for him, for the prophet who had brought him back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and killed him, and his body was cast in the way. And the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the body. And behold, many passed by and saw the body cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it to the city. In the city. And the, in the city, the old prophet dwelt. I am talking about dealing with the destiny destruction. The Bible says, the story we have just read, a great prophet of God who was supposed to fulfill a destiny, who was supposed to be a great prophet in his days. He was sent by God 
to an errand to go and prophesy against an altar, against a king, and he went and God used him. But the conditions were when you go to that land, don't eat bread, don't drink water, don't eat the same way you went. The Bible says, this man went as the Lord had commanded him. And when he went, if you feed the mission, whatever signs that he was supposed to perform, they were all performed. God's power manifested. God's grace was upon him. And the king invited him to his house. And he said, oh man of God, come into my house. Let's go eat, drink, refresh. But the man of God said, no, I cannot come to your house because I was commanded by the Lord not to come into any house. And he overcame that destruction. But they were children of a certain old prophet that saw what happened from this young prophet. He was a young prophet. God had intended to use him greatly. But this young man, when he left the palace, when he left the altar, he sat on his donkey and went away, not going the same way he came as was commanded. And as he was resting somewhere, those children of the old prophet went and told their father, and the miracle they saw, and the young prophet who had come from Judah, what he did, the Bible said, that old prophet said to his children, which way did that young prophet go? They showed the old prophet the way, and the old prophet sat on the donkey, and he followed the young prophet, found him resting on her. He said to him, are you the prophet that came from Judah? The young prophet answered, yes, I am. He said, come, let us go to my house. Let us eat, let us drink. But the young prophet said, no, I was commanded by the word of God not to enter any house. But the old prophet, also a prophet like you, let us go into my house because an angel appeared to me by the word of God and he said, go and bring that young prophet back. Give him food, give him water, let him drink. The Bible says, the young prophet was convinced that is distraction. He was convinced. He went back to the house of the old prophet. Remember, God had told him, don't enter any house, don't drink any water, don't eat any bread in anybody's house. The Bible says, when that young man went back, he ate the bread, he drank the water. God, the voice of the Lord came through an old prophet and prophesied to this young prophet. And he said, thus says the Lord, because you did not obey what I told you, you did not stick by my command. Your body shall not be buried in your land. You shall not come out of this place. You will surely die. The young prophet, after hearing that, he took his donkey and started back to go to Judah. But on the way, the Bible says, a lion appeared, told the young man, killed the young prophet, and stood by him, did not harm the donkey, did not eat the man, he, it only killed him. What led to the death? What led to the death? of that young prophet it was a spirit of destruction and before i want to continue i want to give you several things that you must know and you must put them into place so that your destiny will not be distracted number one you must always be a man a woman of principle what are principle the word of god you must lay down principle can I tell you 
especially for women of God, especially for those people who the Lord is blessing, who the Lord is elevating. Because sometimes when God elevates you, people will distract you. You are proud. You boast. No, you don't boast. It is the standard of life that God has given you. Many people compromise their level, compromise their standard of life because of listening to people. They don't have their laid down principle. This young prophet, he was spoken to by God. Now, when he went to Bethel and the old prophet deceived him, this young man would have cons con would have desired to hear from the same same voice that sent him the young man was distracted by the voice of an old prophet he allowed himself to be deceived position to overcome the distraction spirit by only inquiring from god many people because you lack principles you lack some of us men of god people come and divert you what you are not used to do in church, you start doing because you are compromising. Some big men, some rich tycoons, they come to your church, they want to manipulate you. You will you give in. When this young man heard that this man was a Lord prophet, he compromised because of lack of laid down principle. He could have said, as long as the Lord spoke to me once, he can speak again. Let the Lord speak to me. Why is the Lord using another man to speak to me whereas he sent me? Hallelujah. I'm talking about dealing with the spirit of destiny destruction. People are distracted. This young man died young. God expected to use him, send him on other errands, send him on other mission. But after accomplishing one mission, oh, destruction came on his way and he died. Can I tell you, many of you, little achievement, you are distracted. Little success, you are distracted. I pray for you. Any spirit of destruction pursuing your life, any spirit of destruction pursuing your destiny, it is a Lord that succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shot fire. Hallelujah. The young prophet died. It's like that. Because of destruction. Because of lack of laid down principle. Somebody say, I shall not die young. Somebody say, I shall fulfill my destiny. Somebody say, I shall fulfill my destiny. Many people are told to be great. They are not fulfilling their destiny. Number two. Beware of pretenders. You must know the kind of people that surround you. The people you call your friend, the people who laugh with you. Let me tell you, this young prophet did not die from just a man, from just another prophet like him, an old prophet who was supposed to advise. And let me tell you, when that old prophet had that, that young man had done, the miracles that happened, the signs that the young man performed, even the hand of the king Jeroboam withered, and the man restored the hand of the king. The, the altar broke into two as he had prophesied. That old prophet invaded the young man and he misled the young man. This young man trusted this old man. Many of us today are being distracted from our destiny by trusting people we are not supposed to trust. People that we should hammer, we bumper. People in favor. Ah, don't favor somebody you should fire. Don't bumper somebody you should hammer. Destroy that whatever should be destroyed. Ignore whatever should be ignored. We lack discernment. I am here to speak to destinies of people watching me. They shall not be distracted. Your destiny will not be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Somebody shout, I hear you, man of God. Hey, the Bible is a manual to our destination. You are taught to be a tycoon. Be a tycoon. You are taught to be a great man of God. Be a great man of God. You are taught to be a professor. Be a professor. You are taught to be a doctor. Be a doctor. Don't settle for less. Somebody say, I will not settle for less. Many people of us, we are saying, I wish I knew. Why? Because the people we compromise to, they were the people we were supposed not to. Number three. Hallelujah. Number three. Always keep focus. Always keep focus. Always, I told you, distraction is diversion of attention. Whatever you are supposed to give total attention, focus. Many people lose focus. Many people are diverted. Many people, because of bad company, Many people, because of lack of laid down principle, many people, they lose their focus. Hallelujah. Number four, because I want to, give, to read another text. Number four. Don't look at your past. Don't concentrate from where you are coming from. The Bible says, God ordered the young prophet when he reached Judah, when he's coming back, should not should not use the same route. Many of you, your destiny is being distracted by the time you spent thinking of mistakes you made in the past. Don't concentrate on your past. Ignore the past. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number four. 43 verse 90, forget the past, behold I'm doing a new thing, I am doing a new thing, where are you child of God, don't concentrate on your failures, don't concentrate on your mistake, that is past, that is history, can I tell you, many people in the Bible rose up after ignoring their past, David was a king, who did a lot of sins, a lot of mistakes. But after fasting, after ignoring the fast, he still rose up. Many people, God forgave their sin. They raised to be great. You are not an exception. I prophesy over your life. You will rise again. No matter where you miss the step. No matter I declare my decree. I silence the voice that is coming from your past. Talking to you. You made a mistake. Can I tell you, you did it. The Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter number 17, verse 30, in the time of ignorance, God overlooked. In the time of ignorance, many of us made mistake out of ignorance. We never knew what would follow us. I in trouble our destiny but I can I tell you every destiny that is messed up has been corrected in the mighty name of Jesus I declare my decree every destiny that is messed up has been corrected in the mighty name of Jesus somebody shot fire Number five, be ready to take risk. Be ready to risk. No matter what you lose, be ready to risk. Because of that tomorrow, the young prophet overcame challenge number one. The king told him, let's go to my palace, have a bite, drink water, refresh. And the young man said, no, even if you give half of your kingdom to me, I cannot. That was risking. Risking too much. Many of us today compromise a little and we lose the bigger. We lose the greater. We lose the wider, the powerful. We lose 
Some of us, we were supposed to be people who are going to vaccine nations. But we end up dying in our village, end up being village champion. We were supposed to become international champions. But by compromising few shillings in your village, you end up dying a village champion. You end up dying a local man. You are supposed to become an international champion. Can I tell you, the little you risk today, it calls for greater tomorrow. The little you risk today, it may be enticing. I told you, sometimes the devil brings some fake miracles. Sometimes the devil brings some fake answers of prayer. You are suffering. You need some huge amount of money. The devil brings some little money. You are supposed to give it as a sacrifice. You spend it. You are not ready to risk that small amount of money. And therefore, by spending the small amount of money, the greater account that God wanted to open for you, it is shattered. I pray for you, wherever you are watching me, nothing that will entice you and succeed. The great destiny of Samson was distracted by a woman. Oh, let me tell you, I'm hearing the Lord is speaking to me. Somebody's destiny has been delivered. There are many destinies. The Lord is telling me, many destiny are shattered. Some of you, you are going around Kadesh Barinea. You can remember all the children of Israel choked around with their destiny. They went around the one mountain for 40 years just because of choking with their destiny that it was supposed to be fulfilled. They went around the one mountain for 40 years. I declare and I decree destruction will not cause you to go around one point of life many people keep on going at the same point at the same because of destruction tonight i declare fire upon every spirit of destruction from the pit of hell children of god your destinies shall not be distracted in the mighty name of jesus christ hallelujah I have said no, my destiny must be fulfilled, no matter the bother, it might be bitter, but I'm ready to take the course, I'm not ready to compromise my destiny, I know who I am, I know who God has called me to become, I cannot sell my bad writer, I cannot sell my bad writer for a plate of food, no, 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 many people, great people are selling their bad writer, they are destined a plate of food. Why? Why? Distraction. Distraction comes hiding. Distraction comes pretending. Distraction comes. Can I tell you? The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians that the devil masquerade himself to an angel of light. Hey, the devil masquerade to arrange to an age of light so his ministers many people are diverted by fake ministers of the gospel as much as we preach we don't care we know they are fake ministers of the gospel and many people have fallen in the traps of those fake people because they don't have principle, because they don't have no, they are not ready to take risk because they are not ready to sacrifice anything they compromise they don't have concern discerning spirit where are you child of God I pray over you you shall not fall in the trap of the destructors let me read in the book of 2nd Kings chapter number 2 2nd Kings chapter number 2 what does the Bible say? I'll read from verses 9. Oh. The Bible says from verse 9. Now it came to pass when they had gone over Jordan that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I will do for you before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit 
or a double portion of your power, by the double portion of your anointing. Let the double portion of your spirit be released upon you. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am when I'm taken from you, it will be done for you. But if not, it will not be so. Hear the word of God. Elijah was a major prophet in the Bible. And he had a servant among the sons of the prophet who was Elisha. And Elisha knew what he needed. They were a group of sons of the prophet. And I want to talk to all children of God. All believers wherever you are watching it from. It doesn't matter you go to one church. You don't have same destinies to fulfill. You must know what you can. You must want know what you are called to fulfill. You could be in the same church, but you are carrying different destinies. Many people are distracted from their destiny. When they enter church, they start speaking as a group. No, don't talk as a group. Talk as an individual. Deal with matters as an individual. Pray as an individual. Seek God. Don't wait for the fasting. Let the pastor declare, if you know what you carry, you choose your days of fasting. If you know what you need, some of you have greater destiny than others. Some of you have bigger destiny than others. But the moment you are group, you start thinking like a group. You start talking like a group. No, Elisha was among the sons of the prophet, but he separated himself. And he started following the major prophet Elijah whenever he went. And the Bible says, after Elisha following, Elijah followed. The Bible says, one day Elijah stopped Elisha. The Bible says, they were in Gilgal. And Elijah decided to lay off Elisha from following him because he knew he would be taken from him. But Elisha was not ready to leave Elijah because he knew what he needed was in Elijah. So from Gilgal, the man of God Elijah said to Elisha, stay here in Gilgal, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. I need to go and do some ministry there. And Elisha said, no, as the Lord liveth, I shall not leave you. So Elisha followed Elijah to Bethel. On reaching the Bethel, the Bible says, the sons of the prophet at Bethel came and discouraged Elijah, Elisha and told Elisha, don't you know your master will be taken away from you? Elisha replied to them and said, I know, but hold your peace. From on the sides and the prophet, can I tell you the pressure to distract you from your destiny will come from either side, from your friend, from your pastor sometimes, from your family members, or from the people surrounding you. Elijah was telling Elisha, please remain here. And the sons of the prophet were saying to Elisha, please stop following this man up and down. But the Bible said, hey, Elisha said to him, I will follow you. From Bethel, the man of God said, God has sent me to Jericho. Please remain behind. As I go to Jericho, Elisha said, no, 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 no. That is focus, determination. The man of God, Elisha, was not ready to lose focus, was not ready to lose attention. I told you distraction is diversion of attention. Many people's dimension, many people have been diverted. Reaching Jericho, the sons of the prophet from Jericho came and told Elisha, don't you know, your master will be taken. He said, I know, hold your peace. The man of God, Elijah, said him, no, remain here now. God has sent me to the other side of Jordan to go and do some ministry. Elisha said, man of God, I said, I will not stop following you. Elijah realized, this young man is very serious with his destiny. He knows what he wants. And he asked him, what will you want? What will you need that I may do to you? And Elisha said to Elijah, I need a double portion of your spirit. I ask you, child of God, from wherever you're watching me, what do you need that the Lord should do to you? 
Yesterday, as I was talking to you about calling until you receive answer, I said about Pat Myers. Pat Myers knew I need to see again. He was not ready to be silenced. He was not ready to compromise. His voice, his destiny was in his mouth, and he decided he vowed, I shall not keep quiet until he answers me. What do you need? Why are you compromising? Why don't you want to separate from those friends? What is it that they give you? They are in no value. You don't want to separate from them. Whenever you meet those friends, you don't go to prayer. Whenever you meet those friends, you don't feel like fasting anymore. Whenever you meet those friends, you just you just speak nonsense. You just bug bite. They don't earn any value. Why are you compromising? The speed of distraction is against your destiny and you are too blind to see. Elisha said no to the group of the sons of the prophets. He left them behind. Can I tell you, there are some relationships you must break if you must overcome destruction. There are some friendships you must break. There are some people that will never add value to you and when it is too late, they will leave you when they will see you have nothing to offer, they will leave you. Many ladies, they were used and dumped. Many young men, their money was spent and they were dumped because they never saw destruction. Where are you watching me from? Hallelujah. I'm talking about dealing with the spirit of destruction, destiny destruction. The Bible says, Elisha was given a condition. If you see me taken from you, you will receive what you need. It was not an easy connection. It was not an easy condition. But he had to take risk. He had to follow Elijah. He could not sleep. Anytime he, Elijah walks up, he walks out with him. Whatever, whenever Elijah is, he must be there. The children, the sons of the prophet, were laughing at him. They were telling him, you are must have been taken. But can I tell you, when they crossed Jordan, Elisha made sure he saw Elijah. Elisha made sure he saw Elijah when he was taken. And he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel. He saw the man of God taken. He said, my father, my father. And when Elijah knew that Elijah had seen him taken, he released the mantle. He released the mantle. The mantle fell on Elisha. And the double portion of Elijah came upon Elisha. And the children and all the sons of the prophet saw what happened. And the Bible says, when he was coming back now from Jordan, my new remember, Elijah had separated Jordan for them to cross. Now Jordan had, 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 had got back to its normal position. Now Elisha had to perform a miracle that Elijah performed to separate Jordan. And when he tried to pray, it could not work. But he held the mantle that he received and splashed the river Jordan. And he said, my father, my father, where are you? And he splashed, he struck the water. And after striking the water, the river Jordan. When the sons of the prophet saw what had happened, they realized this man had received the mantle from Elijah. After following for a long time, after following the principles, after being focused, after having been ready to risk, he received what he needed. What is the destiny that God has called you to fulfill? What is the destiny that God has called you to fulfill? Don't lose focus. Don't compromise. Don't be afraid of taking risk. I'm telling you, pay that price. After Elisha had paid the price, oh, he came out a winner, not like a young prophet who died prematurely. Elisha fulfilled the destiny. What can I tell you from the book of 1st and 2nd Kings? Elisha did double miracles as Elijah did because he received a double portion. He was ready and he received it. 
He was ready and he received it. Are you ready for the destiny? You must be ready to pay that price. Are you ready for destiny? You must be ready for destiny. You must have principles. Are you ready? You must break some relationships. Elisha worked out miracles more than Elijah because he fulfilled destiny. Can I tell you child of God, wherever you are watching me, the Lord has commissioned me to every spirit of destiny destruction it will not succeed against your destiny. Wherever you are watching me, I pray for you. You shall not lose your destiny. I pray for you. You will not be distracted from your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody shout I receive Hallelujah, hallelujah. Many people die prematurely, not because God wanted them to die. They compromised. Many people end up in compromised destiny. What they are today is not what God called them to become. And the devil has blinded them. They cannot listen to anybody. You try to advise them, they cannot listen to you. I want to finish. But just before I finish, the Lord is telling me, pray for those destiny that have been distracted, that have been messed up. Pray for those destiny. There are people, the destiny of your families is on your shoulder. You are compromising. You are supposed to be fasting and praying for that family. You are giving up because of the discouragement of life. The people you are praying for, they are the people talking against you, and you feel like you are, you can't continue praying for them. That is distraction. The people you are feeding, they are the people who are backbiting you. That is distraction. Don't compromise. Do what you are called to do. Why are you compromising? Why are you allowing yourself to be distracted? I want to pray for you. Whatever you are watching me from, hear the word of God today. You will make it. You will make it. You will overcome. You will fulfill that destiny. If Elijah made it, if Elijah made it, I declare and I decree, you shall not die like the young prophet that compromised. No. Men of God that are watching, Hearing me, we shall not compromise. Children of God, even if they deny you promotion at work, they want you to compromise. No, that is distraction. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. The plan of God will be accomplished in your life. As long as you wait, as long as you persevere, as long as you keep focus. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter number 13, verses 31 and 32, they came to Jesus. They told him, don't go to Jerusalem because they want to kill you. Jesus was determined to fulfill his destiny, his purpose. He looked at them and he said, go and tell that fox. Go and declare to that fox, I am here today, tomorrow, casting out demons, healing the sick, and all that they will be accomplished. Let me tell you, don't allow fear to distract you. Many of you have been distracted by fear. Don't compromise. Even if things are not working, don't compromise. It is because you have a great destiny. The Bible says, write that destiny in capital letters.
beware. In as much as you need assistance, when you are walking with them, calculate your step well, well. Because the young prophet was misled by an elderly prophet that was supposed to guide him. May the Lord show you kindness. May the Lord you show favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please keep on following me on my Facebook account because of the upcoming programs. I'll be live again on Friday, 8, 8.30 p.m. Be prepared. Another very powerful message from God is coming because the Lord is still speaking. Heaven is not silent. It is speaking for you, for its children. In the name of Jesus. Follow me on my YouTube page. This message, if you did not start started with me, you can still get it in my YouTube page. Open my YouTube page, Pastor David Michuki. Subscribe to my messages. Just subscribe and let us expand the gospel to many people as long as it, it, it should reach them. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm proud of you, my viewers, wherever you've been watching me. May the Lord bless you so much. Men of God that have been watching me, I'm humbled. Be favored by God. May your ministry explode. May your ministry grow in Jesus' name. My daddy, Bishop B. and Mugo, I cannot fail to accomplish your presence. I'm humbled. May the Lord bless you. All of you, my brother Hilary from Malin D. for following me up. May the favor of the Lord be your portion. And all that have tuned are in to watch me. May the Lord bless you. Shalom, shalom. Peace be with you. And may you accomplish you are destined, and no spirit of destruction will succeed in your life. In Jesus' name, for offerings and prayer, use this number 0716-5536-80. 0716-5536-80. Canceling offerings and prayer request. Call that number in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>